What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome back to the walkthrough. So if you followed along on the previous episode, by now you should have a plus 10 unique weapon, whether that's a Bloodhound's Fang or a Moon Veil. Uh, that will easily carry you through the game. Like, that weapon will take you all the way up to where we are nice and leveled up towards the end. Now, if you aren't using a unique weapon, you should still be at least at level 11 on it, and we're going to actually pump this up a little bit higher in just a little bit. But moving forward with the walkthrough, I will be using this for the majority of time until we get to a point where we can naturally grab a plus 7 for those that struggled with making that trick jump. Uh, so if you are using a regular weapon, of course, we picked up Horfrost Stomp. Highly, highly recommend that. Uh, I would still suggest keeping your weapon either standard, quality, heavy, all depending on your stats. But Horfrost Stomp itself is an absolutely fantastic Ashivor, probably the best Ashivor we have found thus far. Uh, so I'm going to be using this just to, to keep damage along par with some of y'all. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out, so at the end of the last episode, well, not quite the end, but partway through it, I mentioned that dragon and how you should kill that dragon. Well, I did kill the dragon on my own. Uh, I'm now up to 40 Vigor. So just talking about stats at this point in the game, if you've been following the guide, 40 Vigor should be your priority. After you've reached 40 Vigor, we're going to start putting a little bit more into Strength, Dexterity, and Endurance for a quality build. So I'm going to get my Endurance probably up to about 25. Uh, strength I got a little bit higher so I could one-hand the Halberd, but I'll probably get my Dex up to about 25 as well. And then I'm likely going to take my Vigor all the way up to 60. So regardless of what build you're using, 40 Vigor should be your target for now. And after that, get your damage stat up to whatever you need it to. So, you know, if, if, if it's intelligence, you want to get that up to, you know, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is for some of the upcoming spells. Uh, same with Faith for some of those spells. If you're focusing Strength, get your Strength up. But 40 Vigor should absolutely be your priority at this time. So, if you killed the dragon and followed the last guy, we of course picked up some Lord stuff. You should have a couple extra runes, which is going to be great because we are about to burn through them. So, we are starting this time from the main academy gate. Now, originally we got teleported over here and we went straight in and started doing the academy. Uh, and I wanted to do all of that to get you the upgrade sooner rather than later. But we can actually run all the way down this road and there is a merchant that's tucked away that we never got to see because we were teleported to the main gate. We didn't actually run up this road and that's just how Ray Lucaria works. But so you run all the way down here. Keep going. Lots of wolves. And here he is just tucked away. Now this merchant is very important because he has an item we're going to want for later. And that is the Fanged Imp Ashes. Now it's not for a trophy or anything, but there is a puzzle tower later in the game. And you solve it with the Fanged Imp Ashes. So if you didn't start with this as your, your starting gift, go ahead and buy that now. While we're here, I would suggest picking up the Stonework Keys because it's always good to have those. And then we can go ahead and pick up this if you want access to the sleep stuff. I'm personally not a giant fan of it, but hey, it's there. So after you have bought all that, the next place we're actually going to go is somewhere that we got in the previous episode, and that is the Ravine Veiled Village. Now we're not going to be going all the way through this area just yet. We will in a little bit, but to be honest, this area is still a little bit hard compared to the stuff that we would typically do. However, we are going to go inside because right up top at the entrance, we can pick up some plus four smithing stones, and then we can use those to get our weapon up to a level where we can then use the plus fives that we have to squeeze two more levels out of it and just get a, you know, a little bit more damage. And at this point, who doesn't want more damage? So this is very minimal danger, what we're doing right here. We're just gonna go on in, grab a couple things. Uh, you shouldn't be too concerned about you know things attacking you or anything like that. I think there's like one enemy. We'll just head on in and see this one guy right here. Uh, and right along these walls, you should be able to find a couple. Let's go on and backstab. There's one of our plus fours. And then there should have been another one. There's our other plus four. So with that, we're good. That's all we wanted to do. Just grab those two plus fours. If you've been following along, that should have you up at uh, above six, which is what we need for the final upgrade. So we're going to hop on back to the round table. As always, triangle, square, X. We'll speed travel you on over there. So we can go ahead and get that 11. And then we have the two fives from earlier. 
bringing it on up to 13. So just squeezing a little bit more damage out of our glaive as we continue on. And from this point, we are going to go to the schoolhouse classroom. Right, now, um, from here we want to, well, first thing we're gonna do is put on our lanterns. This place is a little dark at the moment. You can already see that mage that just passed by. We're gonna go ahead and take just this one out. And then we're actually gonna head on over this way. Let's see, we got a goodie right here. Get the scroll. Wanna pop that. Let me come out here for some loot. For another smithing floor. And then over here, we can jump off this balcony. And we can head out this way and head along. Got a couple lilies. Keep popping up. And now, you're a mage. You got it, baby. It's time to have it your way. The Burger King mask. There's a couple of these in the game, um, but these all have unique effects. This one, <clears throat> as you can see, will lower your HP, but it'll get you three different points into intelligence. So, not a bad trade-off. I mean, that's that's it's actually pretty good when you think about it. But jump on down. And this is right where we just were. So there's the water wheel, all that stuff that we did. We're going to hop back inside. And now we're actually going to go through this area properly. As you head on in, there's going to be more ages. And up ahead, there's going to be even more mages and then a jar warrior. So you're going to want to be a little bit quick here. Otherwise, the mages will start to just overwhelm you. You can already kind of see why I said they can overwhelm you. So we're going to back off just a little bit. There's the jar warrior. Let's get him to come down. Let's get him out of the way. You can see just how much damage that Horcross proc did right there. I'm just gonna keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. God, I hate this part. Don't worry, this is like the hardest part. Once we're past this, it gets significantly easier. Ooh. Pain in the ass, right? So go ahead and get the chest open. We got more mages in this next room, but they're going to be easier to tackle. So round the corner quickly. I take that one out. We're going to go around. And you can usually sneak and get a couple of backstabs, but that last room, every time I have tried, uh, for the most part, as soon as you kill one, the others tend to get alerted, and then it just kind of all goes to crap, so... Go ahead and pick up that. Uh, let's see, we got the Ent Mask, Mages and Jar Warrior. Circle left, kill him for calling on balcony. And the first bookcase up the stairs to the left is a false wall. So go ahead and pop that. And we're gonna go on over here. And then we get Comet, a new, very solid ranged ability for Mage Gang. I think of this like your glenstone pebble, but just way better. I mean, it makes sense. We're getting lots of cool stuff for mages in the, the, the mage school. So over here, you can see a hole. Go ahead and drop through that. 
And then we're going to drop through this. And when you land, head on over here. And we have a talisman from Aegis. The Graven School Talisman. This is going to give you a flat boost to all the sorcery damage. And now we got to kill a couple pot people. Now obviously we just picked up Horfrost Stomp. And we're going to show you just how brutal that ability can be. That's definitely one of the best AoE options that you will have at this point in the game. And you're getting all that for the relatively low cost of only 10 FP. And what's happening is it's not so much that Horfrost Stomp is doing a ton of damage. What it is doing is it's building up a lot of uh, Frostbite. And then we're seeing both the damage and a Frostbite proc. And then as I mentioned before, Frostbite actually uh, takes it causes enemies to take 20% more damage. So all in all, it's just a fantastic damage spell because we're getting those big bursts. We're getting the Frostbite application. You really can't go wrong with it. So up here we have our first real boss of this area, and this is the Red Wolf of Radigan. Now this guy is definitely a little spazzy. Uh, he runs all over the place, he dashes, uh, he has a thing where he'll jump in the air and kind of come down at you with a sword swing. He has the delayed carrying glintstones that'll chase you, and he uses the comet spell we just picked up. So your best bet here is going to be to pull on out your summon, and then once your summon's out, just rush this guy down. Don't give him any room to breathe, just stay on him and beat him until he's dead. You can see those are the horn stones. There's the sword. him down as you noticed you should have another trophy you should also get a memory stone increasing your total spell slots which as a reminder for that anytime we do something if it is something that's pertaining to you getting a trophy or a platinum we'll explicitly state that so if I'm doing something and I don't say it's needed for a trophy and then you decide to not do it that's okay you know we're covering a lot of the content in this game obviously there's gonna be a couple things we miss but we're gonna be covering everything to make sure that you're gonna get the platinum so rest assured you know, as long as you're watching and listening, I'm not going to just be like, oh, we just blah, 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 and yeah, don't worry about this. Like, I'm not going to let y'all miss something you need for plat. Uh, so looking at our damage, we're going to keep going up. I'm going to get my strength up to 30 here. And right now, because I have so much more strength, um, you know, let's, let's talk about briefly infusions. I think I've talked about these before, but it never hurts to do it again. So when we are infusing this, because I have more strength, uh, going heavy and getting that aid scaling strength is going to help out a lot. Whereas if I have more dexterity, this would work. And if the stats were more even, this would work. But for now, heavy is going to be the clear cut winner. Uh, now you can see this is at 157 compared to 191. So once my dex gets up to around 30, that 157 is probably going to be closer to like 300. So from here, uh, we're going to leave this bonfire. And we're going to go immediately to the right. And we're jumping off another balcony. We're going to head on top. And then jump in through this window. And we'll go over here first. Now I got the five crystal buds, and then we're going to go over here, and this is something we need to get our platinum, another legendary talisman. You want to pick that up, and you'll have the Radigan icon. Now, if you're playing a mage, I would highly suggest running this. This is going to make your spells come out faster. It's, you know, it's one of the standard talismans, unlike any mage build. Uh, but so from here, head outside. There's going to be a dude over here we're going to kill first. Then we're going to kill this one. And then we're going to grab that. So from here, we're going to head down. It's easy to just 
Fast travel back to the debate parlor. Right, so from here, we are actually going to get the shortcut to the boss cleared out first. So, there's a bunch of stuff over there, just ignore that for the time being. If I can get up, should be a goodie up here. There we go, I got the key. And then don't even worry about these guys either, we're not worried about them. Instead, what we are doing is going over to this thing, and we're going to jump down. Now there are large balls that are going to roll down these stairs and try to kill you as soon as you go ahead and cross. I'm jump back over though. Grab the crystal dart. Now there is some loot down at the bottom of the bridge. We're going to get that a little bit later, so don't worry about it for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait for that ball. And then we're going to jump over. And we're just going to run. Now watch where the ball goes, because it's going to bounce back and forth. So I can see that right now I'm safe on the left. And just pay attention to whether it's coming down the left or the right, and you should be able to avoid the ball. Now next up we have Moongrum. This guy can possibly hurt a lot. He can definitely give some difficulty. Uh, he will try to parry, which can be quite terrifying for a player at this point in the game. But we definitely want to take this guy on out, so... Oh, there's the parry. Thankfully, I had my one-shot bubble on, so I was protected from that. You can see Horfrost Stomp is largely taking this guy out for us. But with the Moongrum done, now that guy isn't going to attack you every time you try to go to the boss. And you get the Carrion Knight Shield, which of course is quite nice. Uh, so let me see. Do, do, do. Moongrum at the top. Uh, over... Where is it at? I think it's over here. This is going to be the elevator of the main boss. Ignore that for now. There's some other stuff we're going to do first in this area. There's actually quite a bit left in this area, believe it or not. Uh, over here, there's a teleporter. This is going to take you over to the Church of Vows. So if for some reason you haven't been there yet, you could go. But, you know, we, we have already been there. I've been telling you all to drop your spells off there. So don't worry about that. We want to get this door open, though. So what we're going to do, we're going to head out this way. And there are a couple enemies. Okay, and then we're gonna jump, and you can see there's a little walkway here. First thing we're gonna do is open this door so that if we die, we can get back easily. When we head up top, there's gonna be three mages and a pumpkin head, but by killing them, it will stop that ball rolling down. So anytime that you need to attempt the boss, you can just run straight up and you don't gotta worry about the ball at all. So I'm going to try and get close to get a nice, big frostbite on him. I have the FP. I do. Now, since we're going to be using weapon arts a lot, I want to remind folks that over on the left-hand side, you can see where it says Horfrost Stomp, and it's kind of grayed out. That is the indicator that I don't have the FP left to cast that anymore. And now you can see it's lit up again. So, always remember that. Last thing you want to do is try to use a weapon art when you can't. Uh, Glinscone Scarab, this thing's alright. Uh, it's a unique helm, it's going to reduce the FP cost but increase your damage taken. So, you know, it's, it's not bad to use, but personally I'm not a, a giant fan of it. And that is... hang on a second. I can do this rooftop? Maybe I didn't. No, yeah, we did. That's just the Church of Vows down there. Isn't there a loot below me? Looks like there was loot below me. I don't think we actually jumped down here to check. Yeah, there is. See? Learning new things every day. But with all of them dead, the balls aren't going to spawn anymore, so that's great. Um, anyway, after that, we're going to take the other path this time. So instead of jumping across, we're just going to actually go all the way down this. And this will take us near the, the courtyard area that I said we were going to ignore earlier. So just go ahead and run through here. Pop this door open, and there's going to be two mages. You want to kill them, you can kill this guy if you want. 
And before we jump down, what we're gonna do is jump over here. Kill. Dude, headbutt me. Ah, uh, now this is the rooftop route. We're gonna be doing that in a little bit, but first we're getting ourselves a shortcut. Go ahead and pop open this door. You can see we're now right in the courtyard, so if for some reason you die in the rooftop route, you can easily get over here. And this guy is usually inside that doorway, but since he wandered out... Oh, they were all looking for me! That's so cute. Well, not needed for a platinum, uh, right in here. It's the Blintstone Wet Blade. And this is important because it'll allow us to do uh, different infusions on stuff like magic and cold. One more to kill. down and clear the courtyard out. There's a couple of random enemies, but the only real thing that is a threat is going to be this guy. Trying to bait the thing out. dead we can just kind of go through here and pick up a couple different things you can kill all the crabs and stuff if you want just, I mean they're not nothing here's a threat so can't even get them death to the crabs all right uh, off to the left over this way should be a seed I'll grab that and then heading on over this way there's a big crab that's about to pop up Golden rune and some crab eggs. Uh, let's see. Crab guarding a shiny. Keep along the cliff in the other direction. This. Let me just want to stay along the cliff for a shiny crab. that running attack. You can see right back here. I guess it's a glintstone crab, but that is the OG Burger King mask. Now, as opposed to the other one, it's going back, uh, how this one is going to detriment your HP, this one is going to detriment your stamina. So, you know, that might be a little bit more worth it. Not taking as big of a hit. And there's a couple of these masks. We're going to be grabbing a bunch of them. Um, but in general, as a mage, they're, they're definitely worthwhile. You should be using them. All right, um, at this point, let's go ahead. We'll hit the debate parlor real fast, just so that we can have all of our flasks. Um, since I now have access to a nice weapon art, I'm actually gonna add one more blue flask into the mix. And we're gonna see, do I have enough seeds? I do, fantastic. So eight and two feels pretty good at this point. What are we at on time? I think I think we can get through most of the rooftop portion of things this episode. And we can save Renala and maybe the Carrier Manor for the next episode. I want 
gonna jump off the roofs. I'll jump on the roofs, I should say. We got two marionettes we're gonna have to kill. And remember, be, be cautious with these guys, because they'll have that uh, thing where they like malfunction after you do a bit of damage and start doing their spazzy attacks, and you don't want to get spazzy attacked. Now, before you climb the ladder, go around. Let's shoot the golden rune on this side. Um, let's see. I mean, next up we have a mage and three of the avionettes. Those are the smaller ones. And I'd suggest luring them out with a throwing dagger, or your other alternative is, well, there's two options. Either you can try to get them out, or you can try and rush the mage. But I think it's a little bit easier to kill them first. Just keep in mind, they're going to do their spazzy thing, so... This mage is going to do some stronger sorcery, so just be aware of it. A shard spiral, and shard spiral can multi-hit, and it can hurt too, so. darts. Uh, let me see. We're going to proceed and we're going to get the loot on the left before we drop down. Okay. And then we're going to do two drops. That was our first. This is our second. And now we can cross this gap, but it's a little bit hard. You want to aim right for that corner. If you're really worried, you can lighten your equipment load, but you can make this if you're not terrible like me. I swear you can make it. I uh, I messed up. I don't know why. At the very last second, I was like, is it L3 to jump or is it X to jump? And I, I had visions of old button configurations from Dark Souls in my head. It's because, but back when I, like on all the other Souls games, I would, I would bind L3 to be jump, and here L3 is your crouch. And I used to have that to be jump because it's awkward to hold down circle and then tap X. Unless you're like playing claw grip, which I'm not a big fan of. But that's okay, we can get back there pretty easy. You know, you've already seen us fight stuff. And the little bridge that had the avionettes and the more powerful mage, we can actually just run right past them. I was just killing them because, you know, they're there. The avionettes will try to follow, but they won't be able to make the jump. There we go, we made it. So, yeah, a little bit tricky there. Um, there we are. That's one avionette. Um, now there's some stuff over there, don't worry about that for now. Instead, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna kill. We have one with arrows. Oh, ow, man. Big, ow, stop, what, what is up with the stagger? Oh my goodness. You guys are looking like a pincushion. That was terrifying. <laughs> Just look at my character. Oh my god. Alright. Alright, head on right 
here. And, oh, uh, well, let's lure them back out first. There we go. Okay, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see, go left and left around, ambush at the door, um, up top there's going to be a crossbow, and then a smithing stone th four on a railing. Oh, it's a pretty long ladder. We're going to finish up all the rooftop stuff in this episode, though. All right, so here is our crossbow. And we can jump here. And we can go here. And you can roll down. And there's our smithing four. Now here are the avionettes that we ran past earlier. Um, if you didn't kill them, they would obviously not... They wouldn't be here, they would have just been dead. All right. Uh, now those rooftops will just bring you down to this area that we're going to go. If you're comfortable with the jump, feel free to do it again. Uh, if you already failed once like me, I would suggest going this way instead. All it really lets you do is you can get behind a marionette a little bit easier. So you go from those roofs and you get over to this and there is some stuff over there that you can get taking that path But we're gonna get that stuff anyway So I don't know, people are always like you gotta go that way like I mean, there's an area up there But we we can get into that uh, Going a different route. I think we actually dropped to the left here and check my notes uh, Two avionettes to the let's see no, take the ladder down. Where am I at? Uh Second marionette for a rune item, then back and drop near the first to the right. Okay, so we're going to go this way and go around here. I believe this is our imbued sword key. Yes, it is. And then we're going to cross here. We go around this way. We'll pick up the smithing stone three. Go back across. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I believe we do the ladder next. Uh, then jump, take the ladder down for crabs guarding a somber four, and then back up and across. Okay. And if we had taken the other path, it's a little hard to see. Um, but that other rooftop path that basically brought us into this tower. You can kind of see how there's, uh, uh, it's a little bit hard to get the angle, but there's a bunch of different areas of scaffolding. You can roll all the way down uh, to get into this area. So that's why I said earlier that you know, doing the jump again and going across is largely pointless because you're missing out on the imbued sword key and the smithing stone and all that other stuff. So we go back up and then across. Next up, we have two avionettes that are going to be on the left side guarding some magic grease. One thing that's kind of useful you can do is if you hit them once, they'll begin malfunctioning. I said I didn't do enough damage to trigger the malfunction. Let's see. I'll just kill it. There we go. Over here, grab the magic grease. Uh, there's some more enemies on that side, but we're not going to need to get them. Instead, we want to go inside this way. Well, just to show it, I guess we can go over here. I think it's one marionette. There we go. And you can see some areas down there. That's just that, uh, that courtyard from earlier. And over here, there's some stuff, but we're going to be going right down there in just a second. So instead, you want to go up here. Where is it at? There it is. Get this. Golden rune. 
And then you can see there's another shiny that is right on the chandelier. So just very carefully just drop off. Come on. There we go. Hit that. And then you're going to want to jump right down here. There's a ladder. Kill this guy. Alright, stop it. Why, why are you trying to block me with that little dinky shield? Go on. Ow! Go on and kick the ladder down. It's actually my favorite small shield, the one they're using. It gives innate frost and blood resistance. Uh, Shattering Crystal, unfortunately, kind of a trash can spell. So, mages, feel free to try it. I don't think it's very good. Uh, but after we've kicked the ladder, that just gives us a shortcut back to this area. That item we picked up is part of a side quest we're going to wrap up shortly. Then we can go here and around for another shiny crab. And that gives us the... Twin Sage Grinstone Crown, which this is going to be... Uh, it's kind of just like a combination of the two. Let's see, this one is going to be both detrimental to HP and stamina, but gives us a big old boost. Look at that. Six int boost, which is pretty sizable. Uh, so from there, we want to go... No, not that way. I think it's just out here. Yeah, a um, path outside for Burger King times two inside and the other path for the page and the Azure staff from here back to the debate hall. Okay. So this guy can be very deadly if you're not careful. Um, now's a good time to pop our one shot physic. He can rapid fire explosive bolts. So just be ready for it. Those explosive bolts killed me more times than I would care to admit on my initial run of the game. And that gives us Azure's Glintstone Staff, which is a slightly faster casting staff. Um, my calculations, it looks like it's an 8% increase to cast speed, and I believe it was a 15% increase to FP cost, which, to be honest, isn't really that good. Uh, but, you know, it, it's a thing. So, anyway, from this point, we are cleared with the zone. Um, now, there's one side quest we can do, but we're going to cover that at the start start of the next episode uh, and that will actually pick up from over here so we're going to go to lake facing cliffs we're going to knock out thop's quest very quickly and then we have renala on deck and after her we are heading on out to the caria manor and doing some stuff out there so stay tuned and i'll catch y'all next time with some more